Hello, my soccer universe. After all the kids are challenge stuff, I call the short arts challenge. I have no idea why I should have known better. But okay, in the video title, I corrected it and I posted it as such on my Facebook wall and so on and so forth. Uh, so after all that and given again, I have quite some good programming to do. Um, I decided let's make another uh, reading suggestion book with another book that I got um, kind of in the late 2000s. It's this one, How Soccer Explains the World by Franklin Fuhr. Um, and its subtitle is An Unlikely Theory of Globalization. This is a very interesting book. It is not among my absolute favorites, but it's a very interesting and uh, in, in a way easy read that um, spans from the negative side of soccer to the very positive side. And the author makes it really smart of starting first out with the really dour thing, like the how um, the a Red Star, Belgrade uh, hooligans were involved in the war crimes of the Yugoslav war um, to the sectarianism that um, plagues the old firm, goes to hooliganism uh, and so on. But then it gets slowly, slowly more positive. So there's, there's this, you always feel it's getting better. I think the stuff then arches over to, you know, Brazil, stuff have happening there and a lot about Italy which is kind of positive and neg and negative you know with all the bribery that at that point in time uh, I think the book was written around the World Cup 2006 some somewhere there you know everything is dominated by Juve and Milan and how the two kind of split the league between uh, them themselves maybe giving Milan a bit more the international part Juve uh, more the domestic part uh, as a funny story where the author is then abducted by Milan only to be shown, I think this was in 2003 that happened, only to be shown uh, the entire squad with the Champions League trophy that they just won, so that's pretty interesting. And then it segues into the author professed to be a Barca fan, uh, into, you know, how foreigners are always welcomed in Barcelona as long as they embrace the Catalan cause and so on. And yeah, ends then on a very positive note. Uh, lots of great stories in this book, I really gotta, gotta, gotta say, and also lots of um, interesting facts that you will learn. I mean, if you're an expert on any of these topics, um, it will not be a big revelation, but uh, you always have to note that this was actually written for Americans, and I still find it a super, super interesting read. I only can recommend it. This is one of the first books that really got me into, you know, stories of soccer that give you a little bit more than just the games. There's also background story, a little bit politics and all that kind of stuff. Very, very interesting read. And yeah, since I spoke about Barcelona, I want to read you something about the Barcelona chapter. Uh, for me, almost the most uh, memorable part of the book, although the kidnapping of Milan was memorable, um, the hooligan that actually starts um, supporting the Oakland Raiders and doing a little bit hooligan stuff there is very in interesting. So there are many interesting stories in there. There's also one about a Jewish club from, uh, from Vienna, it does not exist anymore, it's now kind of merged into Austria, Wien. Uh, that shows that, you know, it, there was once a time where uh, even Europe Jewish clubs were come 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 up but also you know what happens there then goes over to Spurs and Ajax to kind of um, expose a little bit the Jewish roots in there so lots of interesting stuff if this is your stuff you might like it but this one here I really want to read through to because it made me chuckle uh, at showing that you know as a journalist you don't always get what you want so this is from chapter 8 how soccer explains the discreet charm of bourgeois nationalism there's a thin line between passion and madness. The former Barcelona striker Christo Stoichkov constantly crosses it. Skipping a bit. Reducing Stoichkov to his temper, however, sells him short. He isn't without incredible appeal. A Paul once found him the most Barcelona player of all time. In part, his popularity was a just reward for performance. Between 1990 and 1994, he scored 104 goals for the club. His eccentric playing persona, in turn, 
in turns delicate and brutal, contributed massively to Barca's annus mirabilis, including its lone Champions League title. In '94, he won European Player of the Year. Catalans also worshipped Stoichkov because he replicated their passion. And the unreasonable expectations, unfair demands and hypocriticism that come with such passion. My colleagues are lazy, dumb and money-hungry, he once complained. Like the Catalans, Stoichkov believed that Barca should be playing for the cause and not a paycheck. That's also here. Barcelona has not been taken over yet by uh, the current regime, I want to say, where it's more about trophies and money. This was still a time where Barcelona, you know, didn't have a sponsor on the chest. More or less, you know, we play nice soccer and we are more than a club because we are the, the national team of Catalonia in, in, in a way. But let me continue. I'm skipping again a little bit. And now to the interesting part. Getting an interview with Stoichkov is not easy. After weeks of pulling me off, he agreed to meet me in practice uh, in the locker room of his club DC United. Stoichkov sat on a chair, fresh from a shower, wearing a terry cloth robe with a hood. To amuse his teammates, he pulled out the hood over his head, jumped out of his chair and mimed the motions of a boxer preparing to fight. There was a wild quality to his drama. He threw hard punches in the air and bounced into naked guys as if he were going to pound them. When he returned to his chair, I sat down beside him and began to introduce myself. In Spanish, he said, much better in Spanish. Bueno, yo soy. I realized that Stoichkov made me too nervous to ask questions in Spanish. He blurts out his phrases and has perfected the tough man's look that seems men uh, menacing even in the nude. He wears a permanent coat of stubble over gaunt cheeks. His most innocuous movements look like wind-ups to a punch. I asked the team's press handler for some help. He recruited the team's equipment manager to a translate. Clearly, our interview would be a disaster. But I spent too much time negotiating logistics to waste the opportunity. As I began to explain my project, Stoichkov cut me off. How many copies will you sell? Sharing my thoughts, will that entitle me to earn some money out of this? There was a long pause, during which he stared at me intently. I had no idea how to measure the seriousness of his question. No, I replied. Why not? I'm a poor journalist. He seemed very self-satisfied with his line of questioning. His responses preempted the translations. Will you earn money? Sure, maybe a little bit. But there are poor children in the world. Are you one of the poor children? I asked. I'm giving you an opportunity to earn some money and we won't receive anything. I don't want the money. I won't keep the money. I'll give it to the poor children. And I'll stop it here. The interview doesn't last a lot longer, but I want to keep the suspense. Great line. As I said, this is maybe not my absolute favorite book, but it's a really good read. Uh, as I said, something different I can recommend. If you want to have a fun book, again, have in mind this is mid-2000s, so no Messi, no Ronaldo yet in there, which also has a little bit of a charm for me because, you know, it's just right out of the time of where I really... Uh, felt soccer was great. Maybe there's a newer version now, but give even this one worth the read. So, let me know if you've read this book, what you think about this. Also, if you have any book suggestions, drop them below. I would like to know what you're reading. Maybe I have the book, maybe I don't. I, I, I don't have I love to read soccer books, especially if they're a lot, but something a little bit different than uh, the usual stuff. And yeah, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like these. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates, all things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm gonna wish you a very good day. Bye.